Welcome. Today is Friday, November 10th, which means day five of the Disruptive Innovation Festival, the online festival that asks the question, what if we could redesign everything? On our first session of today, we're joined by Moritz Gekeler, who founded a company on collaboration experience design. He will share with us today in this session his thoughts uh, on this question. Uh, when design means uh, change the situation into a preferred one, what if we can change a collaboration into something that is more excited and more preferred? Uh, he will talk us through in uh, 20 minutes uh, about uh, in this presentation. And after that, we'll have a discussion with some Q&A. Don't forget, uh, this is an interactive session, so you can ask the question, post them in the comment box underneath this video, or tweet using hashtag thingdiff. Uh, for now, welcome, Moritz. Can you introduce a collaboration experience design for us? Sure, I'm happy to do that. Thanks, Kinga. Um, yeah, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to be speaking here to you um, in this, for me, also very interesting format of a Hangout. It's, I think, the third or fourth Hangout that I'm actually doing. Um, so I hope the technology will work fine. Um, yeah, so the topic is um, collaboration experience design, and uh, I personally think that it's quite a clear uh, term, um, but um, I will definitely, of course, talk you through in this talk uh, what exactly I mean by that. Um, just very quickly to myself, um, I hope you can see the screen. Um, I have founded this company called uh, Dolaborate, uh, where I try to help companies to, to do have better collaboration experiences. And my background is uh, in design thinking and uh, design uh, doing in the sense, design facilitation, you could call it. Uh, I don't want to go too much into detail, um, but that's where I come from, and uh, so that you already know uh, where this might be going. Um, before I start, I would like you to um, answer one question, which is, or, or post in the comments uh, down there, um, what, is, what are your collaboration experiences? And maybe especially what are bad collaboration experiences that you have had uh, in the past? Um, and so based on that, um, I can't see, unfortunately, I can't see the comments right now, but we will have a look after my talk at the comments and maybe um, uh, think about how we could uh, improve those. Um, um, but as I said, I'm, I come from the background of design thinking. And um, I hope or I think maybe some of you might have heard what design thinking is. Um, I'm trying to share my screen again. Uh, this is an interesting concept of going back and forth. Um, I'll keep the presentation going for a while so then it's easier. Um, so if you Google design thinking and especially design thinking process, you will find something like this, um, a lot of different process visualizations. And um, design thinking, uh, if, you, if you look at it like this, is a process that helps you to innovate. So you could um, um, define design thinking as a human-centered approach to innovation that involves multidisciplinary teams and it is based on the methods and the processes of industrial designers. So far, so good. Um, but if you maybe follow the discussion about design thinking, you probably also have heard that um, there is a lot of criticism uh, towards design thinking from various uh, areas. Uh, one of the criticisms comes from the design field. Um, and I think that uh, a lot of it is due to the fact that some designers feel that too many people are talking into their own work if they are using design thinking. Um, but also from the business field and from other fields, we have criticism of design thinking as um, being a failed experiment or being the next uh, kind of buzzword that everyone is doing. Um, and that is true to some extent because right now so many companies are using design thinking um, and are implementing it, not only companies but also NGOs uh, in the social sector, even in the public uh, government sector design thinking and correlated areas like service design and so on are getting ever more popular. Um, and uh, so I wanted to, to take this step 
to start from design thinking, because I personally think design thinking is something that is really helpful, um, because design thinking brings an approach and an attitude towards work into the picture that is usually forgotten in the, in the normal work uh, environment. Um, I have this quote here, designers expect that each project is a new opportunity to create something remarkable and to do it in a way that has never been done before. If you imagine this kind of a quote, if you think about this a little bit more, um, then it's really interesting um, because when have you had in your normal work experience this, this feeling of, hey, let's do this completely different. Let's do this, let's create something rem remarkable. Um, and um, I think this kind of attitude is one of the reasons, and this, is, this kind of attitude is one of the reasons that we use design thinking and that we try to teach about design thinking to other people from other disciplines, from business, from government, and so on, because we want to inspire them to have a similarly optimistic and kind of motivated attitude. So whoever of you has participated in a design thinking project or a workshop might have experienced that design thinking usually has a very high energy level. So people who are um, applying design thinking in their work, very often they feel very uh, positive and they have a very high team aspect. They are um, engaged with each other and they are, um, it's almost sometimes people say it's like play, it's like a kindergarten play. Um, so it has a very, uh, yeah, very positive, very energetic feel to it. Um, and so my question for this, with this whole idea of collaboration experience design is how might we make any collaboration experience as engaging as a design thinking project? Um, because I think that not only in the field of innovation, we want to foster this kind of uh, positive and innovative thinking, but also in other fields. Um, and I've tried to, to kind of sum up what I think is the kind of magic formula to having this great energy in the design thinking uh, projects, especially um, in design thinking workshops. This um, uh, Venn diagram, um, we have three elements that um, have to come together for great collaboration. I think, of course, what we are very good at is focusing on content. Everybody, every, all the time focuses on content. So that's usually the part where we uh, think about most. Um, what we maybe think about also is interacting with others. Um, so we have team members, we have people from other teams maybe, or even clients or users working with us. Um, but uh, very, very, very seldomly we focus on what we feel um, in that collaboration. And I think that's um, the difference that we, that we should make. Um, that we, that we also focus on, on the feeling. So if you look at the intersections of these two, so if we have focusing on content and feeling engaged, that is what we have if we have a great presentation. Hopefully <laughs> you're feeling engaged right now. Uh, for example, a TED talk or whatever. Uh, if we have focusing on content and uh, interacting with each other, with others, then we have something that we would call like a facilitated exercise. Um, something from design thinking or service design field, what we call a journey map, for example, or a brainstorm, but a really well done brainstorm. And if we just feel engaged and we interact with others, that could be called play. Uh, so um, what we often do is use warm ups and playful elements in these design thinking workshops. And the question is, why couldn't we uh, do this for any normal um, or other collaboration as well? So the idea is basically to apply uh, principles, uh, design principles to collaboration. I'm just trying to read this uh, question here. How would you differentiate design thinking and systems thinking? Would you consider one better than the other? I'll look back to that uh, question at the end of the talk. Um, there is uh, overlapping parts and there is uh, differences, of course. Um, so applying design principles to collaboration, um, what could be the principles that we can think about? So I think there are three different kind of areas that we can focus on. One is dramaturgy. Uh, I, I deliberately took this word from the theater or film area because I think it's not only about process, but it's about a feeling, more like a, like a narrative that you're creating 
in whatever project you're doing. If it's a workshop, it's a short narrative. If it's a, a long-term project, it's a longer narrative. So how can you make this narrative and this dramaturgy engaging so that the actors, that's the second step, the people who are engaged in that collaboration actually feel motivated and feel good. And the third thing is basically the arena, which is uh, the space where everything is happening. So let's see um, what we can do there. Uh, so first, in terms of dramaturgy, the idea is that we carefully design each minute of your collaboration deliberately um, so that even if you have a longer project, you actually have an idea where you want to do what and not only in the ter in, again from the perspective of uh, content, but also from the perspective of feeling. How do we feel in this specific um, moment? So questions you could ask here is what is your goal? So what do you want to achieve in this session? How much time do you have? So is it a workshop? Is it a three months project? Is it a year? Is it a whole company that works together for years? Um, how often do you want to meet? Um, that's an important part because uh, so many collaborations uh, over a longer time um, have the problem that you meet too much, right? You have like meetings over meetings and basically you get bored um, and you get kind of stuck in, the, in those meetings. Um, so then what methods do you want to use? And maybe even connected to the methods, what templates, uh, templates do you want to use? So if we think about um, deliberately designed exercises, this is basically what we do in workshops, right? So the idea for a longer project would be to have a dramaturgy of collaboration over a longer period is have a set and a, a good mix of workshops in order to achieve the goal. Um, second principle is the actors, so the people um, who are collaborating. Um, and um, if we look at that, so what do the collaborators feel? Do they work alone or in groups? That's one thing that, for example, is a critique also towards design thinking, that everything is done in groups um, and everything is always done in groups. Uh, but there is also the need for alone time. There is also the need for concentrated work for uh, individual. So how can we play around with that? How can we uh, play around with the, the, mode, the mode of how we work together? How mixed should the teams be? For example, but also in systems thinking, um, people say we should have mixed teams, we should have uh, multidisciplinary teams, which is really valuable, I think. Um, but maybe sometimes for some specific um, focus area, you don't need mixed teams, or actually you deliberately want to have uh, uh, homogeneous teams. Um, and the whole thing of how can we establish a better rapport between the people. Um, so as I said before, uh, we often use uh, warm-ups and energizing exercises, and again, not only in a one-day workshop or two-day workshop, but even in a longer time, um, having these playful elements in your in your culture, in your collaboration, in your team uh, setup is very important. Um, and then the third principle, the arena. Um, so how can we use the space uh, to actually uh, fulfill our goal and to evoke a certain feeling in the team? Um, this is actually an example from a work that I did with a, an NGO. Uh, basically, I'm living right now in India, even though I, my company is in Berlin, so I'm always uh, shifting between Berlin and uh, New Delhi. Um, and this was ex uh, interesting because it was NGOs. We were working on the topic of um, gender equality. And instead of going to a normal hotel or a normal NGO office, uh, we took them to a maker to Maker's Asylum, which is a very nice uh, fab lab in Mumbai. Um, and it was really interesting because it completely changed their perspective just by sitting in a different kind of environment. Um, it helped to, to think about the topics they were thinking about in a different way. So how can the space um, help us with that? Um, so, uh, of course, the question is, can you meet physically? Um, that's the space where you are, actually connect people to each other. Um, does it maybe provide different setups? So that what I, what I said before, that you can work in groups, that you can work uh, individually. Um, and very importantly, how can you play with the, uh, with the um, space and the arena? Um, I very much like these words coming from, as I said before, from theater or from film, um, because I think 
if you kind of change your perspective of thinking of your workplace and of your um, collaboration area as something out of a film, out of a movie, or out of theater, I think it gives you more space for um, changing it and for kind of reimagining it um, because it, it has more this kind of feeling, um, uh, feeling to it. So um, in order to give the possibility also for some questions, just one last uh, kind of outlook. Um, the question is now, if you're familiar with design thinking, you probably know uh, uh, more about it. And the question is, how is uh, collaboration experience design different from design thinking? And then we can also maybe think about how is it different from um, systems thinking? And I think um, the important part is that design thinking is very much focused on innovation. Um, even though personally, I think design thinking is a is kind of a mindset that you can apply in any kind of situation. Um, but looking at the organizations that implement it right now, they usually focus on innovation. So they're always thinking about how can we create the new product? How can we create a new business model, a new service? Um, but maybe, uh, or actually often, um, in our daily life, we don't think about innovation. We just want to solve regular problems um, in our daily work. So um, this is maybe one uh, difference why I would propose this name, uh, Collaboration Experience Design, uh, because it puts the focus more on the collaboration um, and gives us the space not only to think about innovation. Uh, second one is that, so how is it different um, from uh, creative facilitation, King, that was something you asked me before when I um, applied for this, uh, for this session. Um, I think it basically heavily draws on creative facilitation. As you can see what I just showed, um, creative facilitation is basically the, the way to execute it. Um, but I have the feeling sometimes in creative facilitation, um, this is, this, those are methods coming from like, I don't know, 30 years ago. Uh, so sometimes I have the feeling it's a little bit uh, old fashioned maybe. And many of my clients and uh, customers tell me, oh, this is something we have done in the 70s. <laughs> and um, I think uh, by putting a new name to it and also putting this new focus to it, um, it helps to uh, make it, maybe refresh it a little bit. And the third reason is, as I said before, uh, designers often um, are critical towards design thinking. Um, and I think it's because of the word uh, design thinking. Uh, because the, the terminology comes from design theory, from thinking about design, and often designers feel that it's, uh, it's losing design thinking as its practice uh, is, is actually kind of losing its, its power. Um, and uh, by putting this, by, by putting the focus more, oh, sorry, um, putting the focus more on um, the, uh, on the collaboration aspect, I think that's, um, that's an important part. So um, I, that was a very quick run through, not, not even 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so I would be happy to answer some questions. And while Kinga, maybe you can uh, come on the screen again. <laughs> Hi. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so we have another question coming in from Jean. Um, yeah. Do you have any experience uh, doing this in completely distributed environment? where there are no two people in the same location. Yes, so I do have this experience. Um, luckily, when I was working in, in, my own, like in my own team, I'm very familiar with the person on the other side, so we kind of know how to uh, do this. Um, but I think the similar kind of elements apply also to the virtual space. Um, thinking about the dramaturgy and thinking about how can you um, kind of time your different slots and how can you manage to create um, moments of engagement even through uh, a camera um, is, is important. And the space, like even if it's, if it's a virtual space, also there thinking about what tools do we need? Do we use something like Google Docs where we collaborate, like we both look at the screen and see something or even more, uh, more kind of design thinky <laughs> um, like morally or, or um, real-time board where you have like a, 
uh, a whiteboard online where you can actually do brainstormings and stuff like that online. Um, but then I think the most important part, there's a very nice blog post by uh, uh, Leila van Alvensleben. Um, maybe we can, I can post it later here somewhere, um, about this from Hanno. Um, she says the most important part in uh, like online collaboration is focusing on the people, on the actors, um, because you have to, as she says, you have to over-communicate. So um, you have to express your feelings even more than you would do in a, in a regular environment, because you see if someone looks sad, uh, if he's or she's standing next to you, <laughs> you can't see it if you're working through email and, and online. So um, I think this is an important part that you can use in the online collaboration. All right, and um, from the actor's perspective, we have a new question coming in. Um, the question is from Elisa, and she asked, uh, you just discussed the factors on how to engage the actors, the people. How can you optimize this time spent alone and the time spent in groups in collaboration? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think um, important is that, I mean, the, the groups part is probably what I already said, by co deliberately designing um, like more like rather than having meetings, designing workshop setups where you are very clear on what the goal is that you want to achieve each time when you meet. Um, and so, of course, one, one way is a presentation like we do it right now where I'm telling you something and either you listen to me or you sleep. Um, that's, that's up to you. Um, but the more engaging part is when you actually involve the people and, and, and do something together. Um, now for the individual work, I think, um, of course, there are a lot of all these self-improvement methods and so on, on out there with to-do lists and whatever other um, um, elements that you can use. Um, I think, again, there it's also necessary that as a team, if you're collaborating and you're, um, you have uh, like individual time and team time, that you are on what exactly you want and you need to do until the next um, meeting. And I'm personally, I'm a very much, I'm a huge fan of deadlines. Uh, I, only, uh, I only work well when I have a deadline. Um, so there is, I think as a team, you can also basically give yourselves deadlines and, and help you in achieving that. I just read the other day about something called working out loud, where you have an online uh, focus group of people where you basically every day say what you're doing today and then in the evening you meet again or you have a call again and you say out loud what you have done. Um, so something like that may be, may be a method for that. All right, great. Uh, for everybody viewing, we have time for uh, one or two more questions. Uh, we haven't had any in uh, any more in at this moment. Um, I'm just... Uh, Maybe the, I didn't really answer the question about the systems design, uh, systems thinking. Um, I think um, I wouldn't consider any of those two, design thinking or systems thinking, better than the other. Um, as I said, um, I think approaches can be seen as a mindset um, towards, uh, basically as a worldview. <laughs> like you look at the world in a certain way if you have this kind of design thinking glasses on or if you have the systems thinking glasses on. I think they overlap a lot because uh, in design thinking we use a lot of um, methods and, and approaches that actually come from systems thinking. Um, I think, um, again, what's maybe one big difference is the design thinking always has this innovation uh, approach and this innovation kind of goal while systems thinking also, as far as I know it and I have applied it, also often has more like an analytical um, uh, approach, not necessarily connected to a, uh, an innovation or any kind of solution in that sense. All right, great. Thanks for that answer. Uh, I think it's a really interesting topic uh, to compare the design and the system thinking because there's also a lot of overlap there. Um, I think uh, this will be it for the session of today. It's been very clear uh, about collaboration experience design. It's a very interesting topic. Um, for everybody, Thanks. Watching, uh, thank you for watching. Um, you can, uh, we have, you can uh, ooh, okay, we have one more question coming in. Should we do oh, yeah. one more?
Sure. <laughs> okay, and then we wrap it up. What about the role of leadership? How do you best quell some clashes of string characters? Okay, um, so I think um, two kind of images are very nice if you think about collaboration experience design as opposed to like something else like project management or something like this. So I personally think that project managers and managers in general should see themselves more as collaboration experience designers rather than project managers or managers because in the end that's their goal that's what they should do they should be uh, focusing and they should be uh, concerned with the collaboration experience of their team or of their project um, so um, I think for the leadership there are two very nice uh, images that you can use one is the image of a facilitator so seeing the manager or the, the leader rather as a facilitator, as a coach. Um, and in that context, the second image is this, um, uh, this concept of servant leadership, which is also not really new, but it's, I think, very interesting and not, not so widely <laughs> uh, implemented yet, I think. Um, and I have had very, I was very lucky in my previous job to have um, a manager who was very, uh, much thinking about these things um, and I think yeah I think that's an important part um, in terms of how to deal with difficult characters um, that's a tough question um, I think communication is key so you have to take the time to talk to these people individually um, and really meet them and try to understand their perspective um, that's basically it. I also had uh, previous teams where it wasn't really possible to, <laughs> to get on the same page. Um, but it's, I think it's important to make that step and to try to um, contact and connect to each other. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Moritz. Um, and uh, I'm do going to wrap this up now. Uh, great to hear about the magic formula for great collaborations. I think it inspired us all. Uh, thanks a lot for that. For the audience, we've had to, we're having more great sessions coming up today and in the next two weeks. Uh, one of them that I'm looking forward to is the Circular Design Case kickoff today at 5 p.m. GMT. And if you missed out of a session, uh, no worries. You can watch them all back on Diff On Demand. Just go to thinkdiff.go. Uh, that's it for now. Goodbye.